And I remember getting the keys to that to that spot and just thinking like, this was my dream. I had no house. I had no I had no money. I have nothing. Now I have a business and I'm a business owner. And now is where the work is going to start. Hey everyone, my name's Nolan. My students call me Professor G and it is my passion helping young people understand personal finance and the ins and outs of starting a business. Let's do this have some advice for my students or for all my followers that are watching and that are going to subscribe yeah subscribe smash that uh <laughs> that's that button that thing the, 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 do the thing the like button yeah the yeah. like button there you go <laughs> yeah smash the thing please yeah, yeah so a lot of my students a lot of my followers have passion but they don't really know how to like put two and two together for whatever it is that they want to start Right. So if somebody has passion, but that's about it, they don't have capital, they don't have um, connections, they don't have any, like right. where should someone start tangibly today? Like what, what, would, what would you tell them? I am a firm believer that if you want something bad enough, you just have to figure it out. So what I, what I did, I knew that I didn't have the money, right? To, to open a business. Yep. It's like, okay, Jake, you have, I'll give you $1 and you have to be able to turn this $1 and do $100,000. I truly believe that I could do that because I'm resourceful yeah. and um, I've always heard that there's money there's money out there you just have to figure out how to get it right yeah for sure so what I would do is I would use my one dollar and buy a pair of tickets right just like that's how I started out doing it I would go outside of hardcore shows you know I'm super into music yeah and I'm like hey let me cut your hair let me cut your hair for free right yeah it's like cool yeah I'll do it boom start cutting hair for free people start coming into my bathroom at the house I didn't have a shop to work out. I wasn't licensed. Yeah. So what did I do? I remember getting off work and coming home and, and, and cutting hair in my bathroom, right? 20 bucks a pop. Okay. And I would do that five, you know, I'll do five haircuts every day. That's a hundred, that's a, that's a hundred dollars right yeah. there every single day. So Dude, I would save true. that and I use that money to buy better clippers, to, to hone my craft, to take, to take classes, to learn how to be even better. Yeah. I use it towards my craft to yeah. build, to build what I need, where I needed to get. Sweet. So you just basically won't take any excuse you won't say like, no oh, just because i don't yeah. have money or just whatever i'll just wait like no you make it happen yeah definitely and you know what perseverance is huge perseverance is huge you know my definition of perseverance is to keep pushing even after that feeling has left you right hmm. i've always wanted to be a barber hey but sometimes some days i'm like i, I don't want to do this i'm kind of tired yeah like maybe i could just work at the warehouse the Amazon warehouse and I could be fine. I could live this cool little life, but no, like, nope, that, nope. I know that's not what I want. My yep. feeling is gone right now, but I have to keep going. Nice. Let me book these haircuts. So more than money, it's, it's your perseverance that's going to get you through and your passion. And you always have to come back to your reason why. Why am I doing this? Because I want to be happy. Because I want to prove to myself and prove to my family. You know, maybe some of you guys out there, your family is telling you, you can't be a business owner. What are you talking about, Ashley? Like, you can't even keep your room clean. Are you like, you like, we're in foster homes. Now you want to be a business owner? Like, you can't do that. You know what? Use that fuel. Sure. Use that fuel. Forget the money. Forget turning a dollar into $100,000. Use your passion. Use your fuel. Use everything people that said, everything that, that people told you you can't do. Use that to fuel you. Forget the money. The money will come. Dude, you, use nice. your passion. Use your perseverance. And use all the things that people told you they can't do to do it. And to, and to First of all, can we just admire this fade real quick? Because <laughs> yeah. he's the only one that touches my hair. And so if you like it, it's my dude. Yeah, I'm, I am your dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Jake. So a little while ago, I was getting my hair cut from him. And at the time, he was just a barber. He was just a dude who was super skilled at his craft. And I would notice, dude, there was a line for this guy's chair. And for the other people's chairs, like, respect to them, but just wasn't as, as crazy. And so I started to realize like, man, it feels like this guy's holding that dude's shop up. So I just hit him with, dude, you should start a business one day. And so we got to talking just a little bit. And after, you know, a couple months, it was just like, boom, we're going to do this thing. And then yeah. this guy, dude, he hit this dream and he just went 100 miles an hour out the gate. I've never seen someone blow up so quick, right? Like <laughs> he, he had his first shop in about a year. What was that? A year, two years? Already onto his second shop, yeah. crushing it, dude. Awesome. So I wanted to get Jake in front of you guys to let you guys know a little bit about his story. So Jake, thanks for coming on. No problem. And um, the floor is yours. So if you could tell us a little bit, man, like I, I actually don't even know, like what, what was it like growing up? And then yeah. like, how did you even know that, you know, how, how did this success happen? Like, how did you know you could crush it like this? Like just, just hit us with some knowledge. 
Yeah, well, first off, it's awesome to hear, like, because, you know, we just wrote down when you're in here and talk about whatever business, but it's cool to see from your perspective, like, yo, like, I saw you come up, you know, from 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 virtually just being a, a barber working to being a business owner, owning my pomade company, and honestly, you're the guy I've confided in the whole entire way, from my first business to my pomade company to my second business. I have not done one move without consulting you, and I don't, I don't consult anybody. Dude, I've never consulted anybody, so... Having my corner's been awesome, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, so take us back, dude. Like, did you have any business knowledge growing up? What did you have growing up that others didn't that were able to like put you ahead? Like, like what's right. your where? Where does all this come from? Well, you know, I grew up. Um, I grew up in foster homes and stuff like that. So I didn't really have like any sort of like parent that was a business owner. I didn't have any sort of anything. All I had was myself, and I had my little sisters, and I knew from day one that hey, you know, I want to be. I am going to be successful, and that just been a, a, a burning in me my whole life, you know? So I had to figure out other ways to become successful. I didn't have, uh, you know, parents that were able to help me out with school or anything like that. So anything that I had, I had to, I had to earn. So, you know, as a kid, like I said, I grew up in foster homes and um, spending for myself. I, put, I think middle school, I remember um, there was like a job fair, right? So uh, people came from, from all over, you know, like we had a, a, a person that like did embalming, teachers, firefighters, and they're like, hey, like you guys have to go to school and go to college to become something or else you're not gonna be anything. So they made us all write down what colleges we wanted to go. And I was always the one like, I don't really want to go to college. You know, I want to be a barber, you know? So I know a lot of people are going to college right now to become what they want to become. But for me, it, w it had nothing to do with college, right? Yeah. So I was like, hey, I want to be a barber. Even when I was, I was, a, I was in middle school, I liked the way that a lot of the hairstylists, they look whatever way they wanted to look. They had their own schedules. So I was like, that fits me, you know, like, I know I probably won't be able to get through, through, you know, seven years of college, but I could definitely get myself into hair school and become something. And they're like, no, like Jake, like here, like, look, if you become a doctor, you can make $300,000 a year. You know, if you become a barber, here's your average, your average barber hairstylist makes $15,000 a year. And I'm like, what? Like, dude, so my, my dreams are getting crushed from early on. Right. You know, so I had everyone telling me, um, you know, foster people that are kids are in their foster home, they age out. 90% of them become drug a drug addicts. Not, you know, like this percent becomes incarcerated. So do something besides either dead or in jail, right? Right. And I'm like, I'm going to be more than that, you know? So I've always had this thing, like, I want to become a barber. So I got through the foster care system. I aged out at 17 years old and I became homeless. And that was like, whoa, maybe I am nothing. I, I remember being 17 and being uh, kicked out and I had bought in a car because I was working at the time and looking in my back seat and I'm like, I, everything I own is in this back seat. Like, what am I going to do? My back's against the wall. Yeah. So, um, soon after, uh, I became a dad, I was probably around like 19 years old and I'm like, I got to do something. So, um, I got, I was on my bike. I just had a, a bike at the time and I rode over to the local barber school hmm. and I, and I sat there and the teacher's like, if you want to do this, we could do this. I just enrolled right there. I didn't even think about it. I said, this is my chance. I'm going I'm I'm to become what I said I would become. Enrolled in barber school. I was working, uh, I was going to school, uh, Monday through Friday from eight to five. And then I was also working overnight loading trucks for Target and uh, working at Supercuts as receptionist, dude. Dang. Yeah, so I was grinding, man. Like any pictures I had, like in that time, I was like asleep, like dead asleep, dude. So uh, worked through uh, worked through barber school, got through it. I was going to school out in Palm Springs at the time, right? I uh, found a job out here at Riverside, Riverside Shape. I, I, I remember driving past it because I'm from Riverside. So I remember driving past the shop. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's sick. Like a traditional barber shop. Like, you know, you didn't really see too many of them at that time. Yeah. So I'm like, I want to work there. So I went home and got an Instagram. Um, I saw that they were hiring and I messaged the owner. I was like, hey, um, I was like, hey, uh, um, I know that you guys are hiring. I'm not licensed yet, but like my dream is to one day work at a shop like yours. And the owner at the time, he was like, you know what? If you want a job, you can come in and start sweeping hair and, and earn yourself a job. I'm like, that sounds awesome. You know, I could start Monday. So I was just finishing up barber school at that time. Do you want me to? So I was just finishing up barber school at the time. So I would drive, dude, from Indio, which is like an hour and 45 minutes away to Riverside and just sweep and clean toilets and answer phones for free, you know? I didn't have money at all, dude, because I wasn't making any money. So um, what I would have to do is I would sleep in the back of the shop. What? Yeah, so, yeah, dude, it was crazy. <laughs> so the owner, he didn't really trust anybody to have a key to his business, you know? He would, at six o'clock, they would be done, and he'd be like, all right, man, like, if you want to stay here, you can stay here, but I got to lock you in. No. So he would lock <laughs> the door, and I will be just sitting there, like, studying for my barber test or doing whatever, and then I'll probably knock out on, like, eight o'clock in the back, and um, there's like a lot of homeless people out in the back of the shop. Oh. So I would sleep with a screwdriver because they'd always be trying to get in the door and stuff like that. So I would be in the back of the barbershop sleeping, dude. Like I don't got gas money to get home, but this is my dream. 
So I'm sleeping, I'll wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, and you know, everyone starts coming in. I'm sweeping, doing my thing, then I started cutting hair. So he's like, you can cut hair, but it has to be free haircuts. You can cut your friends and family or walk-ins come in, it's free and the shop keeps all the money. You can't make money yet, you know, as a barber. But what was cool, at the time I was paying my dues. I was like, whatever, I just want to cut hair, like let's do it. So I had already gotten my skills pretty sharp and in barber school, I just started cutting everybody, dude, everybody. And I'll be in always a good mood. How's it going? Yeah, I can get you working through my breaks, everything. So slowly I started building a clientele and the owner's like, you know what, man, you can start making money now. I passed my state barber test, I have my license. I was a licensed barber, dude. Let's go. You know, so <laughs> I'm like, dude, I remember being outside the state board and seeing that license and just, just emotional, man. Like this, I earned this. Like nobody gave this to me. Nobody helped me with this. You know, I earned this. Nobody could take this away from me. So I, I used that. I used that, man, and I and I went with it, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, I started cutting hair. Um, I think I met you soon after, honestly, dude, soon after, because I've yeah. been cutting your hair like yeah. eight years now, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I knew the whole time, I knew, always knew that I wanted to open a business, right? But I also knew that there's levels to things. Sure. I am not going to. I'm not going to know how to run a business. I'm not going to know. I want to know everything there is to know about cutting hair. I want to be the best at cutting hair. I want to know everything there is to, to know and to not know about being a business owner. Because that's in life, you know. I never knew how to be a dad, but I knew how to not be a dad, right? Sure. So I'm learning everything. I'm watching my business owner. I'm picking up things that I like. I'm also watching the things that I don't like. Good, about yeah. what he's doing nice. so I'm learning and and you know over the years my clients just like you start telling me Jake you need to be doing your own thing man you need to be doing your own thing and the whole time I, I'm not really want to talk about what I'm gonna do yeah I, I do not like talking about what I'm gonna do I like yeah. talking about what I am doing right sure so I'm like it's not my time it's not my time but trust me man the whole time I was burning too like yeah. Man, it was it was killing me, but I needed to pay my dues. I did that for like seven years, traveled all over the world. I got sponsored by um, a couple of different barber clipper companies, pomade companies, and they would actually hire me to go on stage and, and educate for their brand. It's not really something I want to do, but I knew it was going to legitimize myself, Jake Shipwreck, as a shipwreck brand, right? Right. So I'm learning how to cut hair. You know, I came from scrubbing toilets. Now I got some clientele. Now I've got some notoriety behind my name. And now I know, okay, guess what? This is this is about it. This is about to happen. So what did I do? I'm like, Nolan, you're the smartest dude I know when it comes to business. How do I look for, how do I lease a place? How do I look for, so you gave me those pointers, man, about negotiating my lease. So what I did was I got some lease agreements. I sent it over to Nolan. I'm like, hey, how do these look? He's like, they look awful. This is what we should do. Like, and played hardball, you know? He taught me how to play hardball and got me an amazing deal on my first lease on my first barbershop and everything started to just fall into place, man. And yep. and I remember getting the keys to that to that spot and just thinking like this was my dream. I had no house, I had no I had no money, I have nothing. Now I have a business and I'm a business owner. And now is where the work is gonna start, you know. From so the I, outside in, looking at this guy, you'd say, Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean of course he's gonna be successful. Dude's got like almost 100,000 followers on Instagram or TikTok or these things. So he's got a huge platform. Dude looks the part. Dude's got two shops and he's got a bunch of barbers that want to cut just like him because mm -hmm. he's at the top of his game. So yeah, if I had all those, I'd be successful too. But if you listen to everything he just said, he put in work when yeah. nothing was promised. You had to bet on yourself and you For did sure. that. Mm -hmm. And because you scraped from the bottom to where you're at now, now you do get to live in it. And that's awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty surreal feeling, man, for sure. I mean, there's nothing that I could do in a day to be a good barber, a good business owner. It's what you do every single day that adds up. Nice. Right? So it's not, you can't take Nolan's class and be a great business owner. But this is going to be a fundamental step to becoming the best business owner. And just by you taking initiative and being in this class and caring, caring, you got to give a crap. Dude, for real. You got to care, put in the work and the time. And, and and once you are good at what you do, then you can roll with it. Dude, your customers can tell if you care. Yeah. And that's why they come back. Dude, like you could be you could even be the best at your craft, but yeah. if you're a crappy person to be around, like nobody I I don't care. If I get a good haircut but I don't like the person, I'd rather go and get a mediocre haircut but right. I like the person. No, a so. thousand yeah, a thousand a thousand times over. I agree completely with that. I couldn't agree more. You you want to feel like you're supporting somebody that you like and somebody that cares about what they're doing. Yep. I get people all the time like, you know, how long have you been doing this? I'm like, so like 10 years, man, and I still love it. And they're like, yeah, I can tell. Like, my barbers are happy. I'm happy. You know, a lot of people are, are, are scraping for employees right now. You know, people don't want to work, you know? Right. 
and, and, and what's going on in the world, I feel like a lot of people are using it as an excuse to maybe close their businesses down. Like, oh, I couldn't survive the pandemic or I couldn't survive this. Yep. But really, the only person that you have to blame is yourself. Yep. Straight up. Straight up, man. Dude, well, I'm proud of you. I think that you're doing a good job. And I'm super excited for what, you know, what's coming up next. Thanks so much. Thank you.